Uh, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I really appreciate this uh, conference uh, very much, and uh, uh, I've been learning a lot uh, through uh, excellent and esteemed speakers. But uh, I felt one most important thing was missing. That is what is happening in Fukushima and East Japan. Actually, already there have been people who have been showing symptoms. Uh, um, in the last uh, session, there was some um, uh, professor who was talking about the immediate emergency of symptoms that has been happening. In Fukushima, I've been, I heard a lot of stories uh, of children who got nose bleeding, vomiting, diarrhea, and uh, uh, lashes all over. It, it was so common. And uh, people started to talk about it uh, right after the accident. But uh, now people got used to it, and they don't even talk about it. And as uh, Dr. Hashimoto has said, uh, government-sided doctors are on the top of medical society in Japan. And they are trying to conceal the kind of symptoms occurring apparently because of radiation effect. And they are saying totally the opposite thing. Uh, like, uh, only about one or two months ago, I made a phone call to Society of Medicine in Japan. And their, their answer was, uh, we, haven't, we haven't found any health hazards so far caused by radiation. That's their attitude. I think they are criminals because I have seen lots of uh, people who have been complaining about nose bleeding, diarrhea, vomiting, and uh, so on. And on top of that, I myself uh, have experienced so kind of, not, not exactly the same, but let me explain. Uh, I was in Tokyo, not in Fukushima, more than 200 kilometers away from the nuclear power plant. But, uh, and uh, since I, I, I do uh, translation as well, and I have translated three radiation-related books, and uh, since I knew how dangerous it could be, I evacuated from Tokyo to Okinawa. And uh, the timing of the evacuation was really bad for me because I evacuated uh, in the afternoon of March 15th. And uh, maybe some of you might know, but in the morning of March 15th, very thick radioactive cloud was passing through Tokyo. And you would be surprised, like, uh, per uh, cubic meter, more than 1,000 big wells of radiation cloud was passing, and Tokyo Metropolitan Government was measuring that real time. They were measuring the real time radiation particles from the 13th, and uh, from the uh, evening of the 14th, they were watching the figure going up, but they didn't let the residents know about it at all. And uh, so was Fukushima. Uh, people only in the very, very small circle were told to be evacuated or stay indoors. But uh, uh, the, this very thick radioactive cloud was moving around, and the, uh, even though some organization, uh, that organization was Tokyo Metropolitan Government uh, Industry Bureau, uh, have this uh, precise machine measuring the particles, they didn't let the uh, residents know. And uh, I didn't know either, of course, and I was riding a bicycle with my one-year-old boy, and uh, uh, there was no symptom on that day. Uh, I didn't know anything about it. But uh, about one month later, my, my boy and I suddenly got high fever, and uh, my fever was more than 103 Fahrenheit degrees in Celsius, more than 39 degrees. Eight days continuously, never dropping. And uh, I went to the doctor, and I took the uh, flu test. I didn't have any flu. Uh, I had the x-ray, uh, uh, nothing. And, uh, uh, and after that, uh, I got this 
film, very yellowish uh, thick film. Oh, I'm sorry, you <laughs> eating. <laughs> but anyway, it kept coming out, and uh, even now, um, I have this kind of sub film feeling, even now, even after two years. And uh, so I went to the uh, uh, nose eye, a uh, nose doctor, uh, quite recently, and they, uh, the doctor got a tube into my nose, and then uh, I'm not allergic to anything, but uh, he found uh, some inflammation uh, between my nostril and throat. That, was, that is the reason of irritation. And also my boy, oh, my boy was so healthy uh, until that accident. Uh, he was one year and four months old, and uh, he had never had any fever by catching cold. And I, uh, since I was, I'm a translator, I sometimes translate at home, and I took him to the daycare where many children are playing around, and of course, um, some children get cold and everything, but my boy was fine. Never a single cold until one year and four months old. But uh, at the same time, when I started to have high fever, he also had high fever, about 101 Fahrenheit degrees, uh, more than 38 degrees. All and off, 13 times in three months, I was so, you know, shocked and nervous, and I, um, I immediately I realized, oh, we were exposed. And uh, somehow I checked the internet and found out that Tokyo Metropolitan Government's real-time measurement figures, and I was like freaking out because more than 1,000 becquerels per cubic meters of air we have inhaled. And about some months later, uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Government announced only on the internet that Tokyo uh, Metropolitan residents had inhaled 3,600 becquerels of particles, radioactive particles, in March alone. So, even Tokyo people have been exposed to radiation, that's for sure. Of course, there is a big difference if you are outside or inside. And uh, actually, I've, I've heard a lot of stories from mothers who got sick, like me, and uh, whose children got sick, and they went to the doctors, and uh, they checked the thyroid. And uh, lots and lots of children, and even mothers, have nodules. I myself got, uh, got my thyroid tested. I have two small, small nodules in my thyroid. And my boy has countless, very minute nod nodules all over. And actually, uh, this uh, test was conducted by Dr. Hashimoto, my dear friend doctor. Uh, two minutes more. Okay. Um, and uh, she, uh, she is actually uh, working in Osaka, uh, west side of Japan area. And uh, she, she takes all the children, and almost no children have minor uh, size, of, size of nodules. But when she takes children from Tokyo, almost everybody has it. So that, what does this mean? I think this is the most important thing. Even Tokyo uh, kids are showing abnormality, of course, uh, uh, Dr. Hashimoto went to Fukushima as well, and she just showed you know, how bad it is uh, through the pictures. If some of you uh, might have missed that, please ask uh, her to show the pictures. Uh, Fukushima children are in danger, really. So what we have to do now is to find some way to evacuate these kids to safe area. Otherwise, I'm sure, um, you know, lots and lots of kids will be uh, uh, from Chernobyl. We know that it's not only cancer, all sorts of disease. And uh, I myself am very worried about lung cancer. Um, uh, and uh, since uh, we have inhale, so many number of people have inhaled, even in Tokyo, 3,600 girls. And uh, I heard some stories about 
uh, diabetes. Uh, diabetes uh, getting uh, immersed, getting high, even among children in Fukushima. What does that mean? And also, heart anomaly, heart anomaly rate has been increased in Ibaraki Prefecture, uh, just below Fukushima Prefecture, um, among children, junior high school kids. And so, it is already coming up, and I, I think this kind of story is the most um, urgent subject. And unless we do something, uh, we cannot save children's lives. We, we don't need to study, we just want a way to evacuate kids. Thank you very much.